In the past, I've always wanted to kind of document how different types of plants, or especially certain types of crops, handle colder temperatures, especially when we get into frost territory later on in the fall. And so this is a video that I myself would find very interesting uh, to watch. So it gives some documentation for me uh, so that I know um, you know, which plants might be more sensitive to frost uh, and might need to be take priority to get covered or protected from those cold temperatures and which ones might be okay. But it can also be very valuable or interesting information for you as well. Uh, and so that's why I'm doing this video. All right, so first off we have, these are dry beans um, and this is the black turtle variety. We can of course see that these are substantially frost damaged. Um, they're probably uh, basically done at this point. Uh, I mean, they're definitely basically done at this point. And um, so a lot of these pods, the immature, like they're past, they're past the green bean stage, but they're not at the dry bean stage, right? So those I can shell and use them as like a, you know, edam edamame type substitute, cook them up, um, kind of use them kind of similar like you would dry beans. What I can do is I can either cook them uh, straight or I can freeze them in, like in jars and stuff over the winter time and then uh, pull them out and cook them over the winter. Uh, but you know, of course I'll shell these first, but the ones that are like a little drier, like this, yeah, this one's uh, brittle. It, it cracked a little bit, That this one's good, can just, uh, I can set this one aside and let that dry naturally and that'll give me a dry bean so when i go through and harvest these i will i'll harvest the ones that are more of like the shelling bean <laughs> type stage uh in one container and then the dry beans stage ones i'll put in a different container because i'm i'm just obviously going to um prepare those two types of beans differently but yeah, these, these bean plants are definitely done after this frost that we got in um, uh, last night. It got down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the West Indian cucumber plants are also uh, definitely done. They don't like this. And this, this row is the first row in the whole garden. Um, so it does not... Uh, it doesn't get a whole lot of protection from uh, wind and weather, so it's going to get um, it's gonna, it's going to bear the brunt of of the cold snap there. Um, but yeah, so the cold, the West Indian, Indian cucumber fruit is still uh, good to pick, uh, and I'll go through different uh, picking some of this out. But yeah, and then after a frost that just went down to 32 degrees. The basil is pretty much done. It still sent out a couple more flowers today. Um, but as far as, uh, I mean, this plant it might bounce back a little bit. I don't know, we'll see. There are some green. So probably if I had put like a blanket over this, it might've been, might've been okay. But yeah, so we definitely have some browning of the leaves. So this, these are the tomatoes. These are in a much more protected part of the garden. They're more in the middle areas, so they have a little bit more wind protection. Uh, they don't look uh, terribly happy about the frost that we just had, but uh, it was pretty light frost. But um, I did go through beforehand and harvest a bunch of the tomatoes. As you can see, I, I, missed, I missed a bunch of them too, like the green unripe tomatoes. Um, if, uh, if it doesn't go down below freezing tonight, I think it's supposed to warm back up for the next few nights or so, so I might just leave them on the plants for as long as possible. The tomato plants themselves don't look too damaged overall. There is a little bit of wilt with the younger growth. A little bit of leaf curl. You can see here the perennial bean. It looks like a little bit more resilient in this respect than the um, uh, the 
uh, bush beans, right, the black turtle. All right, we do we do have some frost damage on the leaves here from you know, a little bit of light browning um, on some of them, but the younger the younger growth still seems to be there for now. I don't know, it may have, that I think it got yeah, it looks like it got kind of finished off at the tip. So maybe not so much, but so this this plant might be done for the season as well which is a bit of a bummer because I was hoping it would um, be able to flower and bear some fruit, but but I may have to wait another year. And then over here, of course, we have the peppers. Uh, we have a little bit of light tanning on, on the pepper leaves, yellowing, tanning, kind of. Um, and along with a little bit of like leaf wilt curling a little bit overall the plants don't seem like immediately affected too much some a little bit more so than others yeah some of the fruit I'll have to see if it warms warms back up the next few nights, I think. So, um, you know, if worst case scenario, I harvest these peppers, I harvest these peppers green, and then I can just use them like in cooked dishes and, and stuff like that if they're not fully ripe. Then the canaf here is uh, in the uh, hibiscus mallow family. Uh, the plant actually seems to be pretty good after a, a light frost. One of them is actually flowering back there still. Um, despite the frost we had last night, this one's starting to turn out a flower too. Um, so, but we do have some leaf curl from the frost. A little bit of frost stress here. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, but the new growth seems largely unaffected. Interesting insect here. Don't know what that is, but um, but yeah, ideally I'd, I'd like to see these plants be able to get some seed so I can hopefully grow some more next year. They are a pretty tall plant, and they don't like they don't like it when it gets windy this time of year. So, so I actually really thought the canoff would just be completely wiped out after the first frost, but I think we may may have been. I may have been kind of lucky here with just how light the frost was last night. Um, so maybe this can go for a little bit more. So thank you so much for checking out this video on um, which crops uh, can be kind of frost tolerant and which ones are not. Uh, this one, in this case in particular, was kind of interesting because it seemed to go right down to the 32 degree Fahrenheit mark, right? And it, it stayed there for a little bit of time, but it, it wasn't like a hard freeze or anything like that. And so now we have a better idea of which plants can be more sensitive uh, and which ones are less sensitive to these colder conditions. And from this, we can increase our skill as gardeners in uh, prioritizing uh, the protection of certain plants from frost while letting other plants go that can uh, handle it a little bit more smoothly. So thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care.